when I was elected sheriff, this was one of the things that uh, had always been on my mind, these, these homicides that had been, uh, you know, committed over the years and, and really didn't have any resolution. I know that the investigators did a good job, that uh, there was probably something there that we could look at, but a lot of them hadn't been looked at or hadn't been looked at very very closely for a long time. So I, I actually mentioned to, um, to Monty one day at, uh, you know, maybe we should look at starting a, a unit to, to look at these um, and, and dissect them a little bit more. And uh, and he he ran with that. It was wasn't but a few months later he came back to me and he had a plan. He had uh, uh, an idea for how we could do this. And um, so he he just kind of ran with it. And and I'll let I'll let Monty kind of explain where it went from there because uh, he's he's the guy that's been doing this since day one. Yeah, gr- yeah, great. And I know Monty Monty Wallace. You've of course a familiar in Montana broadcasting circles too, uh, in both TV and radio. But you've also even even during your broadcast days continued as a reserve sheriff deputy. Yeah, talk about the the importance of this cold case unit. Well, it, it's been uh, certainly something that's been close to my heart. So when, when the sheriff decided to form the unit, um, I, did, I kind of took the ball, ran with it. I recruited uh, 14 retired uh, law enforcement officers from all branches of law enforcement. We all got together, reviewed the cases, and took a look at which ones were, uh, were the most solvable. And that was really the start start of the project and it's been a long-term project uh, since that time as we've reviewed each of these cases look for information that would bring us to a conclusion and also look for DNA evidence and other forms of evidence that could be used. I know 1973 may sound like a long time ago I mean it was before I was even born but but for the families these wounds are still fresh, and, and I'm sure this that that the murder of of this young couple, you know, in fact, the husband was a a, a, a Vietnam veteran, uh, and, and his his wife, so they were a young couple at the time. I'm I'm sure it's just haunted them now for decades, and, and still just fresh wounds. Well, the family certainly uh, has been in contact with us on a regular basis regarding this case, uh, and and certainly wanted closure. Uh, many, many times over the last few years, uh, there wasn't much we could tell them. Uh, all we could say is the case is still being investigated on a daily basis. We're working hard on it, and we hope to make progress soon. So <clears throat> when we actually were able to put it all together, it was a great phone call to make. So, yeah, the news, for, for those who haven't heard it, uh, Matthew Brown with the Associated Press had, had a good write-up available this morning. Uh, Linda, but uh, it basically sounds like a genealogy database eventually was what r- really was so helpful uh, in order to track down uh, the long-dead suspect. Uh, but, yeah, Linda, the, the victims here, Linda and Clifford Bernhardt, they were both only 24 years old. They were killed at their Billings area home in a case that would stymie investigators for decades. It says investigators now believe they were killed by Cecil Stan Caldwell, a longtime City of Billings employee who once was a co-worker of Linda Bernhardt. Um, so what? tell us how the, the break really came in this case. Well, uh, to kind of summarize it, because it's a long story, uh, one of our lieutenants, uh, the lieutenant that, that handled the detective division, Ron Wilson, back in 2004, uh, was able to discover uh, through lab tests DNA on an item of clothing. And that really was the first big break in the case. Uh, the, the next big break came in 2015 when a company called Parabon Nano Labs uh, came up with uh, phenotyping and was able to come up with a basic composite of a person based on their DNA. And they could predict hair color, eye color, complexion, ethnicity, uh, and a lot of traits that, uh, that you can detect from DNA. And that all came together to produce a composite of the particular individual that we were looking for. Then the next big break came uh, just in late last year when Parabon uh, teamed up with uh, forensic genealogists, and they were able to take the DNA from the crime scene and take traits from that DNA all the way back to the early 1800s 
and then bring that down to two possible suspects uh, that uh, that would have uh, been in the area during the time of uh, the homicide. Time for a quick phone call, I think, here. We've got Ryan in Lockwood uh, with a question. Ryan, your question. Um, yes, first, congratulations. I mean, that's excellent to hear solving any cold case. takes a ton of weight off of the families and loved ones of the people involved. Um, my question, I was curious if you guys were looking into the Miranda Fenner case out of Laurel or intended to. All right, thanks for your question. Yeah, uh, any any thoughts on the Miranda Fenner case? Is that another cold case? Yeah, absolutely. That's another case that we're looking at right now. We have a couple of them that we have a special interest in. That is obviously one of them. That's a that's an important case for us. We've been helping Laurel with that, pretty much taking the lead on it now. Um, and uh, we've we've been uh, in touch with the Laurel Police Department. Got we've received their case files. Uh, it's been quite a while ago. We've been uh, started working on this. So. Um, absolutely, that is an important one. I can say that we've made progress on this case, and uh, when the time is right and when we have uh, anything that we can report, we will certainly be doing that. That's great to hear about the progress. Uh, probably about a minute and a half or so to go here. A big thanks to Sheriff uh, Linder uh, for joining us and also to Monty Wallace, the cold case coordinator here. Uh, Monty, what what else is being done across the state for, I guess, kind of in conclusion here with about a minute to go, but talk about what's going on across the state of Montana or what, or what more could be done to help solve these cold cases across the state? Well, there's there's a ton of cold cases in Montana. Uh, probably, last time I looked, uh, over 200 uh, unsolved homicides, uh, and a lot of them haven't been worked for many, many years. Uh, what can happen is that agencies... Uh, you know, are able to develop a cold case unit, whether it's made up of volunteers or full-time staffers or a combination of both, to to uh, start to reinvestigate these cases. I understand that Missoula uh, now has a cold case unit that the, they have just formed. So I think it's it's only just began, and it's it's going to be a, a an interesting process to watch as our success maybe feeds the success of other agencies. Yeah, well, congrats to you and your your team. I I, I just can't imagine uh, how much that means to those family members after all these years. So thanks again to both of you for joining us this morning on the show.